Hi, my name is Adam Benzing. I'm a second, soon to be third year uh, resident at the University of Central Florida program in Greater Orlando. I'd like to discuss with you the, uh, briefly introduce the topic of non-opioid pain management. It's a big topic, but I hope I can inspire you to read up on it further. As we all know, we're facing an opioid epidemic, the starkest illustration of which is the CDC's recent pronouncement of a decline in U.S. longevity, primarily attributed to this crisis. Not since the 1918 flu pandemic has the U.S. faced such a prolonged decline in life expectancy. As ED practitioners, we're on the front lines of this crisis and see its effects on a daily basis. But our role can be more than just resuscitation, but prevention as well. By reducing our own use of narcotics and the treatment of our patients' pain, we can help prevent addiction and relapse while preventing harmful side effects. Opiates are extremely effective for pain management, but their use does come at a cost. Because they're so effective, it's easy to fall into a routine of habitually utilizing them, but we have options. We don't need to be so dependent on narcotics to alleviate our patients' pain. Instead, we can focus on reducing narcotic use by expanding our toolbox. By first utilizing a non-opioid strategy for pain management, we can relegate the use of narcotics to second-line analgesics, and in doing so, further reduce the doses used and the likelihood of dangerous complications. The approach is well described by Dr. Sergei Motov, whose work inspired this presentation. I have no affiliation, I've never met him, but found his work to be an excellent starting point for this subject. As many things in medicine, it's a simple strategy with a fairly complicated name. <clears throat> the, uh, the concept is simple. There are a variety of pain pathways, each, representing, each presenting a variety of mechanisms for blockade. By using two or more drugs to target multiple pathways, we can use lower doses with fewer side effects than by using narcotics alone. So let's review our pain pathways. There are three classifications of pain, neuropathic and the closely associated nociceptive and inflammatory. In addition to the opioid receptors, there are multiple physiological mechanisms that can be used to regulate pain. We'll briefly go over each one and their most relevant pharmaceuticals. So cyclooxygenase is ubiquitous in all tissues. It's as cell signaling pathways. It's isoforms one and two, a three being controversial, with COX-2 being expressed as early response to inflammatory stimulus, resulting in further inflammation and uh, in further inflammation and, and uh, increased pain. We're all familiar with the COX inhibitors. It is important to note, however, that the mechanisms of the NSAIDs and Tylenol are different, and they do work quite, quite complementary with one another. The uh, adrenal receptors are also ubiquitous and with a variety of physiological functions. Stimulation, however, of the central alpha 2A receptors concentrated in pain pathways of the midbrain and the medulla result in its analgesic effect. Clonidine is, is a non-selective alpha agonist. It's most associated, of course, with hypertension management, but multiple studies do support its use as a narcotic adjuvant, reducing opioid dosing by up to 30 percent with a mean blood pressure change of less than 10 percent. The central calcium channel blockade modulates GABAergic neurotransmission. This is a traditional mechanism for anti-epileptic drugs with known analgesic and anxiolytic effects. However, evidence is, supportive, is most supportive for neuropathic pain with pretty limited utility in acute nociceptive pain. Now, NMDA receptors are responsible for excitatory synaptic transmission. They have concentrations in both the peripheral and spinal nociceptive pathways. The only current NMDA antagonist that's currently available for regular use, regular use of course, is ketamine. This is a non-selective, um, which results in a broad range of potential psychomimetic effects. However, it's a very important to note that these effects are dose-dependent. Numerous studies support low and sub-anesthetic dosing to achieve analgesia. And a wide range of, anal of analgesic applications have been shown, from fractures to visceral abdominal pain. Multiple studies, including RCTs, have demonstrated equivalent analgesic efficacy to standard doses of morphine. Now, local anesthesia is nothing new or novel, but there's much, much more room left for broader utilization. With the aid of ultrasound, we and our patients have much to gain from learning and mastering our regional nerve blocks. Especially when it comes to fractures, there's almost no extremity that can't be man managed with a block. Um, in summary, I think we missed a slide. Um, so the use of lidocaine, IV lidocaine, is a little bit more novel and, and with promising studies supporting its use for systemic analgesia in treating visceral and central pain modalities. Although it is a class one antiarrhythmic, the limited studies have shown only benign side effects, none of which were cardiac. In summary, while very effective, use of narcotics for pain control have both long and short term consequences. By reserving them as second line agents, we can reduce both their use and the doses required while still effectively managing our patient's pain. This can be accomplished through a strategy of two is better than one. 
By combining therapies that treat pain through non-opioid mechanisms, we can treat pain with fewer short and long-term side effects, and of course, more frequent use of regional nerve blocks. Thank you. Adam, thank you so much. Lawrence DeLuca, you're on deck, so come on up and we'll get you started while the judges give Adam some feedback. So uh, that was an excellent pharmacology lecture in five minutes. Um, in fact, many of our college or medical school professors would be would do well to mimic that same type of tightly given and uh, overpacked presentation. Um, liked your slides, liked your delivery. Uh, it, there was a there was a chance for you to take a deep breath and give us just a moment to actually found you. Thank you, but actually give us a chance to, to process all the information. But it was very well done. Thank you.